welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly and this week we're going to be doing compound forms on the wheel. If you are unfamiliar with the term, a compound form is when you basically end up throwing two pieces to uh, attach and end up making one. This is great for if you are a beginner and you want to start doing larger pieces and you can't quite get there yet. Or if you're just struggling with a certain form, maybe breaking it up into sections is a good idea for you. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I want you to think about is what kind of shape you want to make. I ended up actually drawing the shape that I'm going to make out just so I can kind of show you guys just a really simple sketch. But basically, I'm going to make this sort of bottle-like base. And so I cut the line here. So this is going to be where I end up separating the two pieces that I'm going to throw. For this, I'm just going to be using my pottery wheel. And one thing I would advise everyone to have is either calipers or a ruler. This is going to be great for measuring where each piece attaches and making sure that you have good connection points and that things end up lining up. So let's go ahead and get started. So that is pretty close to the bottom, as we can see, kind of from here. It's not exact, but it's close enough. One thing we do want to keep note of is the fact that we want a larger place to connect to, and we want this to kind of be flat. So before I'm done with this, I'm going to end up just kind of holding my fingers on the side. I'm not pinching. I'm just going to hold and compress down with my top finger. See how I'm getting a really flat edge there. That's all I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure. I always measure from the widest edge. So this is about a little over five and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and be done with this piece. We'll cut this off and then we'll move it to the side. So because this is going to be our top piece and we want this to have an open bottom here, when I push my finger through, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here. And so that way um, it'll be lined up pretty well and that way we don't have to like cut all of this out later. <laughs> it's gonna pull it off of the wheel you can open this like normal and then before you start to like lift up I'm just gonna end up taking a wooden tool you can also do this with a needle and cutting right down to the bottom here so we can just take out that center just like that so what I'm actually doing is throwing this upside down so the bottom part is gonna be the opening top of this is going to be the part that connects to our other pot. That way we can measure it at the top rather than trying to measure it down here.
it's a little bit small, so let's go ahead and whiten this up a little bit. So that is the top part. And basically I'm gonna flip this upside down and put it on the other piece. However, with this one, because it's the top, I'm not going to cut this off just yet. And I will show you guys why in just a moment. So I will have you guys set your pieces aside and we'll wait for them to dry. All right, everyone. So it has been about a day that I've let these guys sit out overnight. If the weather for you is hot and dry, it might be less time than that. And depending on if it's like rainy or humid where you're at, it might take a little bit more time, but you do want these to be a little wetter than the leather hard stage. So it can still move a little bit, but it's pretty much firm where it's at. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna attach these together. So the first thing is we want to slip and score. So we're gonna take our needle tool and score up the top of our base here. We're also gonna do the same thing on the top of our other piece, which will essentially attach onto here. All right, so that's all scratched up at the top, if you can see that. And then we're gonna go ahead and slip the top. I'm just gonna use all the leftover little bits that are in here. And if you aren't sure what slipping and scoring is, it's just where you end up scratching the surfaces of the things you're going to attach to each other. And then uh, slip is just watered down clay that we'll end up essentially using as glue. So now that I have that on there, since this is still attached, remember we didn't wire this off, all I'm gonna do is flip this over and line that up. And because we did our measurements properly, should be good all the way around. So now that that is there, we're gonna go ahead and wire this off. So I like to kind of use the top of this bat and press up against my chest here to kind of hold it, but if you wanna try and hold it with your thumbs while you wire, just make sure that you can keep that wire firmly to the top of this bat here. Just gonna wire through. And this should come right off. Now I did end up wiring through the bottom of this. However, when I wired, I didn't take it off. So it is still pretty much centered. So the reason that I like to kind of keep this the way that it is, is so that way, let find the needle again. I can kind of go in and adjust this. So what I really like to do after all of this is set up is I like to get my hand back in here and almost use it like I'm still throwing the initial piece. So we can use our sponge. Now the top of this still has, um, let me lift up the whole back for you guys to see this, still has quite a bit of excess around the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my needle I'm just gonna cut some of that off. So I'm just slowly pushing this in. An angle here. So I can take this off. I'm thinking I'll probably take a little bit off the side here too. You never quite know how it's gonna look when you're throwing it upside down like that until it's actually like attached. So I'm thinking, this looks a bit better. And now there's enough space for me to get my hand in here. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in from the inside 
and really compress this connection point. You can still see it's still wet enough that my hand will actually still make an indent on that. All I'm doing is compressing with my inside hand and my outside on the same spot where these connect, just so I can kind of smooth those out a little bit. It is getting a bit narrow, so I'm gonna take my hand out of that. And any excess water, if you get that in there, do always make sure you get that out. Now I'm just gonna fix this top part that just got a little bit warped here. I do have quite a bit of extra up here at the top, so if I did decide that I want to, you know, maybe try and pull this and, you know, get this to be a bit thinner or, you know, maybe a little bit of a different shape, we could go ahead and do that. And I think I have it almost right where I want. So if you found that, you know, this didn't end up working well for you or, you know, when you went to attach that they ended up being a little bit different sizes or, you know, you removed the bottom one from the mat and therefore you can't put it back on the wheel like this, that's totally fine. You can just end up taking them both off the bats and slipping and scoring them directly. I do suggest that if you end up having a sort of line where your pieces ended up meeting and they don't quite match as well as you'd like them to, go ahead and roll up a coil and slip and score over your connection spot and you can go ahead and just add that little coil in there and you should be able to just kind of smooth that out so that way you have one even side. So I hope that was helpful and uh, thanks for watching everyone and if you haven't yet go ahead and hit like, subscribe and I will see you all next week. Thank you.